I strive to make only two or three decisions in any given tournament. That was said by a professional Magic the Gathering player. Before I played Boom, I played that game competitively. And I read a lot about game theory stuff because um, the formats changed so much over time that looking at individual cards and everything kind of lost its value once the meta shifted. So I like to try to study the very general concepts and that was something that really stuck with me and kind of impacted how I approach learning how to be competitive at other things I do, not just that game. And I think it applies to Boom really well, and I'd like to kind of break down what it means and why it applies so well. So a Magic the Gathering tournament, an open one is nine rounds, each one's an hour. Um, you cut to a top eight if you do well enough after that. Um, a Grand Prix 15 rounds, and a Pro Tour Invitational is even bigger than that. So this is thousands of cards he's playing every tournament, and millions and millions of potential lines of play, and he wants to only have three of them that he needs to debate in his head. That seems ridiculous, and it kind of leaves like, what are you doing with the rest of them? What he's saying is that he wants so much preparation and so much experience with them, that he knows exactly what to do 100% of the time with everything else that he's doing that day. That he wants to be so confident with the matchup and his game plan and what he wants to do to win the game that he doesn't even have to think about what he should be doing because it'll come automatically to him. And he will only have to think about a couple weird corner case situations he runs into. It still seems a little ridiculous, but um, when you have that kind of prep, it's possible in my mind, I think. Um, how does that apply to Boom? So, there are 60 cards in each Magic deck, so you really, it's pretty much impossible to run into a situation where you've seen this exact scenario before, once you get a little bit deep in the game. And the same is kind of with Boom, that layouts have the same buildings, but they change so much that it's really kind of a stretch to say you'll run into the exact same layout more than a few times. Um, but that said, if you have hundreds and hundreds of repetitions with different strategies, different prototypes, different troops, all that stuff, you have such an incredible foundation of what works and what doesn't and what you should be doing that when you see something, you can know automatically what will work, what won't, and you won't have to think about it. And that's important for two reasons. <clears throat> First, when you have to think about basic stuff, you have a decent chance of kind of guessing what the answer will be, and that opens you up to mistakes. And if you have the practice to know what works historically, you have a lot better chance of getting it right. And secondly, when you're focusing on more simple things, you're not focusing on the complexities of whatever's going on. And you're likely to miss some little nuances that'll give you that extra 1%. And really, the game's all about inches at a competitive level. Um, you can win a lot from just kind of forcing it, but you can also lose a lot against the things where you don't have the ability to just force it and make it work. Um, so, how this applies to Boom, my advice for you guys. Boom doesn't really have specialty type stuff. Like, you can be in opposite, you can be like a Zuko only guy and it works. But in PvP, you really have to use all the troops if you want to be successful against every base. Um, so work on everything and do a lot of research about what other people who are good at the game are doing. That's how I learn a ton of my stuff, is I'll watch videos, I'll find things from people who are among the top in the world, and when I see something that looks different from what I'm doing, try to figure out why they're doing that. And how it's helpful. And that takes some time. It's not the easiest thing to say, oh, he's doing it because of this, um, especially when you're first figuring out how to do stuff. But when you see something that's weird, try it. See if you can force it on an attack you're doing. See how it goes, what helps, what doesn't. Um, and try to really work on it and work on it until you have it down almost as well as they do. And once you have it down, 
you'll be comfortable with it and you can stop thinking about it, which is the important part. Then you can focus on the smaller details of a bass, the little differences between what you've watched and what you're doing right there. Like, for example, this laser. A lot of people will skip Zookas with laser bases because it'll just melt everything, but with a positioning like this, you can put bullet in front of it and it'll shoot the wrong way, won't touch any Zookas, you don't even need a shock on it. And that's something that is not natural, like, lasers are notorious for just melting Zookas, so it's hard to kind of get through that mental barrier of figuring out how to have a laser not touch you at all. Um, but once you can build on that stuff, then you have it. It's like riding a bicycle, that once you learn how it moves, you can start working on your balancing. Once you get that, you can work on the pedals, and the balancing and how it moves are still in your back pocket. You don't have to think about that anymore. And that's really how you build your foundation of the game. Work on simple stuff, add it to your repertoire, use it and implement new things as you go, and you'll develop really surprisingly quickly. And it'll start to become incredible how well these things work, especially once you have a good foundation. You have like a good background of how to get troops to work, so when you try something new, even if it goes so-so, you still have such a good build-up of stuff to use that you can kind of fix it and see how you can improve it in the future. So strive to make three decisions per map clear, maybe. See what you can do. Try to get comfortable with all the different strategies and little hidden secrets and tricks of the different troops. See how you can use it to your benefit. And that's how you'll go from a good player who sometimes has to force stuff or boost more than he should to somebody who can take down pretty much anything. I'll catch you guys next time. Until then, my name is Ryan. This is the PSC Life, and happy booming.